together we declare that we are grateful indeed you are a good god you have shown us your mercy you have shown us your faithfulness you have shown us your grace we are recipients of your kindness and lord we are not careful to say thank you tonight for the many things you have done in and through our lives we owe you our lives we owe you thanks and so father we pray from grateful hearts that you accept this gratitude let creation know that you are the god behind every result let the nations know that these are not the doings of men only god can do these things and so we return thanks we return thanks and lord we pray let it please you to continue doing wonders in this place indeed you are the god that doeth wonders continue to open our eyes continue to embrace us with levels and dimensions of the spirit that will dumbfound principalities and powers we thank you even for tonight thank you for encounters thank you for transformation thank you for light thank you for empowerment thank you for results in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you please be seated hallelujah good evening everyone um i really want to appreciate everyone particularly um those who are coming here for the first time and the many who are following us online it's always a joy to <clears throat> converge like this it's a time of learning it's a time of growing i made a vow and i made a covenant with my life and my destiny that i will never stop learning never stop learning for as long as i am alive and for as long as there's breath in my nostril i will never stop learning i acknowledge that there are many things i do not know and so while we celebrate the ones we know we continue to contend for the ones we do not know when you become satisfied with where you are then you have placed a peg on your growth that means that you are telling god there is no need to take me higher than this and because god gave man a will he will honor you praise the lord there has to be a hunger a hunger that while it is being filled another one is created and you continue to rise from glory to glory from glory to glory let me encourage us again to continue to be very open and receptive to the word of god no man can be helped listen to me no man can be helped who hates or ignores the word of god the moment you ignore the word of god you have ignored the creative dimension of god and that means nothing will ever be made in your life praise the lord it is the word that makes men i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified when we gather like this week in week out it is always an encounter with the word of god which contains a revelation of the ways of god micah chapter 4 when you read from verse 2 and 3 the bible says that when the mountain of the lord has been exalted all the nations shall flow to it they shall say come let us go to the mountain of the lord to the house of jacob give us micah chapter 4 please he says and he will teach us his ways we are not there just for entertainment he will teach us his ways and then when we know his ways we will walk in his paths he will teach us his ways 
So one of the primary tools for transforming the saints is the teaching ministry. What does it mean to teach? To bring to comprehension. To open your mind to understand the dynamics of an operation. Not just the awareness that it exists, but how it works. The greatest blessing you can have, um, maybe second to your salvation experience, is the opportunity to belong to a spiritual family where there is an accurate communication of the ways of God. That means that if you continue to submit to the truths that you hear, you are not the one who will lift yourself. The truths were designed to lift you. When you receive them and they become life, let me tell you, it may take time, but inevitably, your life will be turned into a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So my excitement every time we come here, it's not just because... Um, we're coming to fellowship as important as that is but that every time we come under this grace there will be an unfolding of a dimension let me tell you this you will be in great deception to believe that there is nothing else to learn and there is nothing else to study it's a joke compared to the dimensions we need to get to we are only a step out of the cave there are so many things that we need to learn that make for victory and then there are many things that we have known but have not become spirit and life and so there has to be a system of reiteration and emphasis right so that if you did not get it before you can get it now honestly god sees my heart that my prayer all the time is that you understand these things that i teach and you pay attention to them and watch the lifting power of light forget about darkness just focus on that light he says that was the true light that lighted every man there is a false light religion there is a false light the doctrine of men there is a false light the perspective of men that comes from their pride but there is the true light and that light can light every man not men of god the light lightens every man and he says you cannot light a candle and put it under a bushel if the candle is not lit you can hide it somewhere but the moment there is light upon that candle you cannot hide it and he will teach us his ways every week the lord continues to clear confusion from our lives and our destinies he continues to bring color to your life he continues to by his word give you a chance to life so that what i could not the privileges that i could not walk in either by reason of yesterday or by reason of my background or the limitations of my territory it is remedied when we feast upon the revelation of God's word. We begin to learn his ways. You are not growing if what made you afraid yesterday still makes you afraid today. It means you are not growing. There is no light. The Lord is my light and salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. Many times... You will almost be pressured to doubt what you believe and doubt what you receive. Why? Because sometimes, many times, in fact most times, it takes a while before the word of God um, would manifest physically into the results that we desire. And that gap, Satan is a master at taking advantage of that gap. To make you think that the word of God is unfruitful. Are we together? And so you have to trust the integrity of God first. That whether or not you have any physical evidence that shows that what you hold is true. Trust the integrity of God. The word of God has been proven again and again and has been found to be faithful. 
when you find yourself doubting the word of God, it's an attack. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so I came tonight to really, really first encourage us. I'm afraid for any believer that does not have an intentional value for the word of God. That believer is not only a dangerous person to himself, he is going to be dangerous to others. Your security in this kingdom is your understanding of the word of God. Your security in this kingdom, your immunity in this kingdom is the fortification that knowledge provides. We must continually be passionate to know and to see not just to be aware of the realities that exist in the kingdom but to see to understand the dynamics of their operation with time i can know what you have believed by the results that show let me tell you this results in the long run do not lie results may not be a good basis for gauging your progress in the short term why because certain things will take time to prevail but in the long run when life gives you an appreciable period of time and the requisite level of results are not produced then you do not have any excuse are we together just because jesus did not come back to life day one you would be too fast on him to feel that he was not the resurrection and the life so be patient if Jesus had not resurrected after one week, we'll be in trouble because or we know that something is wrong. Destroy this temple and I'll build it in three days. One week may be too long. One day may be too short. So somehow find consolation in the fact that even if my life is not producing certain results, I will be patient, patient, patient. But then if after a long period of time my life also refuses to produce that result, go back and check what could be wrong. Hallelujah. If at all I have any fear in my life, it is this. I never want to hold on to something that after many years I will find out I was holding on to a lie. If at all I have any fear, it is this one thing. To hold on to something that I think is light and then after so many years discover that I've held on to shadows rubbish and nonsense the Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness why because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man and the end thereof are the ways of death it's like students writing an exam Everybody is boldly writing something on that paper. But the lecturer is the one who is going to mark. And he knows exactly what he is looking for. There are few people who will come out of an exam hall and start crying and say, I failed. Usually people will come out and with boldness and confidence. Some will say, this is a piece of cake. And so we all wait. Not for the students not for their pride not even for their fear we wait for the lecturer when the results are pasted sometimes you will see someone who was quiet didn't see anything you would think he was afraid and then you will come and see that that person cleared everything and then you will find a loud noisemaker shouting around making all kinds of claims and not only will his results be written there they will write see me that means your your issue yes are we together continue to vet your revelation listen there is no revelation in the body of christ today that is too big to be cross-checked no revelation i don't care from who and for how long every revelation if it is of god there should be no fear in vetting it because it should be consistent find out
yourself what you believe to know whether this is true or it's a lie. Don't run with lies. And after many years, you find out that you have wasted your time. Build a church on nonsense. Build a ministry on nonsense. Build your own life on nonsense. It is because of this he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping, not discussing, equipping of the saints. What does it mean to equip? To bring to your life the tools needed for the work. Equip comes from the word equipment. Is that true? You equip me when you supply the tools needed for the work. If I'm in the farm and you bring me syringe, are we together? And you bring me bandage, you did not equip me. You brought equipment but not for the work. What will I do with a syringe in a farm? What will I do with a bandage in a farm? So to be, to be equipped does not mean to coordinate any information to me. No, 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 no. I must see where you are going first. And then by the intelligence of the spirit to know what will be needed for this journey. Hallelujah. When we get to the farm and they say, everybody bring out your tools. Some will bring seeds. Some will bring their hoe. And then someone will bring a hammer. He will bring a syringe. Both of them are not equipped for that good work. So the Bible says to equip the saints so that the saints now being equipped will do the work of the ministry. It's one of the things we continue to do here that you are equipped. By the Spirit of God, He grants us access to the blueprint. What are we becoming? What is the demand that will be placed on us? And when you know it, He begins to supply the various equipment you will need favor here keep it you will need the mercy of god here keep it you will need speed here keep it you will need to know how to engage warfare add it here you will need to understand your identity in christ keep it here are you seeing the, the tools now yes you will need to understand men keep it here you will need to understand the realm of the spirit and how it operates keep it here when you have those things like a toolbox it says go you will continue to receive other tools but go so when you stand and there is a door the holy spirit who is guiding you will say where is that hammer that i gave you before bring it out he has broken the gates of brass and caught the bars of iron inside. You get to a place and there is a door. Where is that key that I gave you? You pick it and you open that door. Are we together? Yes. When you do not excel, it is because you probably do not have the tools or you do not know how to use the tools effectively. Praise the Lord. Our military people continue to write that the federal government supplies more equipment. They have the know-how, but the equipment, the equipment, the equipment. We need to be equipped with the tools that will make for practical victory. And for as long as you continue to remain interested, God is never weary to supply these things. Please, listen to me. Do not stop learning. Do not stop passionately pursuing the knowledge of the ways of God. This is your victory. That knowledge, that light, that understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What I want to share with us tonight is very powerful, will be very fast. And... Um, the Lord himself will open our eyes and grant us understanding.